But this virus is dangerous on so many levels. It's obviously dangerous to our health, and we have to take it seriously. It's really dangerous for the economy. Could kill our nation. But I'm also getting more and more concerned about the danger currently operating in the shadows. It's being whispered in discussions and backroom deals in Washington and possibly even in your own local and town and state. The politicians and those who really want control, they are gauging our reactions. Will the American people let us get away with it? No. Green New Deal. No. This is the question we all need to be asking ourselves right now. How much freedom are we willing to give up? How much more powerful are we going to allow our government to get? I can guarantee you that there are a number of people in Washington right now in government, both left and right, that are watching and wondering these same things. The government never refuses to let a good crisis go to waste. For socialists and progressives in Republican and Democratic parties, it is their standard operating procedure. If you remember uh, Barack Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, when he said this. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Wow. An opportunity to do things you could not do before. Like what, Rahm? Maybe like nationalizing the health industry? Hey, maybe this time we can nationalize the banks. See, this is just for starters. But you know they have a full book of things that they want to do to fundamentally transform the United States of America. We know it because we saw them try to do it, and they'll attempt to do it one crisis at a time. James Clyburn just said the same thing. He said, and let me give you the quote, he just said, a tremendous opportunity to restructure things to fit our vision. Wow, that is almost the phrase used in the famous Fabian socialist window. Let us remold the world closer to our heart's desire. This isn't new. And when we fail to take personal responsibility for ourselves, we invite the government to grow larger. And with our increasing dependence on the gods of Washington, D.C., our freedoms and liberty diminish. Again, one crisis at a time. But this may be the biggest and last crisis with a constitution like we have it. This is why I've urged so strongly that you have to be prepared. Have at least two weeks of food. Buy gold. Eliminate your debt. Exercise your Second Amendment to bear arms. Don't wait for the government to come save you for anything. When we fail to take personal responsibility as individuals, that's when the local government, the state government, and then the feds step in. And by then, it's way too late. Power obtained very rarely goes away. I want you to take a look at this idiocy watch if i get corona i get corona at the end of the day i'm not gonna let it stop me from partying you know i've been waiting we've been waiting for miami spring break for a while about two months we've had this trip planned two three months so we're just not even having you know, a good time whatever happens ha- what what's amazing about this clip is he apologized just today he's learned his lesson and said i feel like an idiot for that but this is when governments are forced into action and on cue the media sprung into action look at this headline Florida governor refuses to close beaches as Corona uh, cases rise. It's irresponsible headlines like this that will further open Pandora's box. Not the government. It's the stupid kids on the beach. As expected, the media wants to paint Governor Ron DeSantis as incompetent in the face of a crisis. But that's not what DeSantis is doing. Check this further down in the article from Governor DeSantis. And I quote, We've seen some big crowds in the west coast of Florida, and I had a chance to speak to mayors of both coasts today. If they want to continue to leave the beach open, we want them to have the freedom to do that, but we also want them to have the freedom to do more if they see fit. They being local governments. That's how America is supposed to operate. It's a snowball. First and foremost, it's you, the individual. Then it's the town. Then it's the state. These idiotic kids failed so then it goes to local city mayors they failed well the local mayor is supposed to know what's best for the community right if you fail then he's failing i'll go every day and twice on sunday with a guy who actually lives in my community because usually they don't fail it's rare that in a real crisis we get the mayor from the movie jaws you remember that guy Here in Texas, a shelter in place was ordered for all Dallas County. That means no travel unless you're taking a walk to exercise, you're getting essential items like food or medicine, or you're caring for a loved one. Well, the mayors of Dallas, Fort Worth, and Arlington 
yelled about Governor Abbott. It's about time you make this mandatory for the entire state. What? It's cowardice. That's what it is. It, it, our country is going to be unrecognizable. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The cowardice here is the mayors in Arlington and Fort Worth and Dallas. If you think it's so important for your city, then you issue the order yourself. But too many are afraid to make that kind of call. Maybe, maybe if you are, maybe you shouldn't be in a position of power if you can't make the big boy pant decisions. But it's not so bad everywhere else in America. In the city of Big, Big Spring out in West Texas, it has about 30,000 people. Zero cases of the virus. They've declared a public health disaster. But they haven't shut down their businesses. Why should they? Why should their economy tank because of the mayors of Fort Worth and Arlington and Dallas and those who refuse to do their job? The moment we start calling out higher authorities to come rescue us, bad things happen. And progressives are chomping at the bit right now. Remember, bottom up, top down, inside out. They want to respond to your cries for help. Did you hear what the mayor of New York City uh, uh, wants Trump to do now? This is a case for a nationalization, literally a nationalization of crucial factories and industries that could produce the medical supplies to prepare this Mm. country for what we need. Bernie Sanders, here we come. Healthcare factories nationalized? Are you kidding me? Oh, but we have a constitutional right. There are limits on what the government can do, right? If we continue down this path, the Constitution and Bill of Rights will be all but dead letters. The mayor of New Orleans just signed an executive order that allows a ban on the selling and transportation of firearms. If she pulls that trigger, so to speak, then she needs to be brought up on federal crimes for violating the Second Amendment. The governor of New Jersey didn't even wait. He already halted his firearms transfers. Bill of Rights be damned. California, they're closing shop. Get ready because these are the types of things that we're all going to be tested with. And this was done at the local level. Imagine what happens when it goes federal. And that's exactly what the socialist progressives and the media is calling for. This is from an article on CNN comparing Trump and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Check out this quote. Quote, for many viewers, there's a stark and jarring reminder of the broad chasm between the federal government's response to the coronavirus pandemic and the efforts at the state level where governors like Cuomo are increasingly taking stricter action. Great. That's what they should be doing. They're practically begging for the federal government to take over. I thought you didn't want to create a tyrant. That's what you're asking for. Do you really want the feds involved? Because, oh, yes, the feds have a plan. They've been developing scenarios like this since Eisenhower. And it's been growing ever since. 